Yes, it's there. It's Flatson 3.12, the latest Flatson theme update. And I'm very excited because it has a lot of new features that I would like to show you. My name is Seth. I'm one of the designers at Flatsom. And I'm just going through all the new features, check them one by one. And hopefully after this video, you know everything about this new theme update. So I want to get started right away. And the first thing that I want to tell you is that Flatsom will be ready for WooCommerce 4.3. Uh, it will be released around the 7th of July, uh, but you as a shop owner don't need to worry because Flatsome will be ready. So I'm just going to check this and going to the second new feature. And it's one of the features we all very excited about because we could already create custom product layouts, but now you can assign them uh, to any kind of product. So you can create a layout and assign it to a product and create a different layout for another product. And you can also assign it globally to categories. So how does this work? Uh, so I have a shop. In this case, I just have two products. And as you can see, the laptop layout, so this page structure is the same as my headphones. Uh, now you already could create custom product layouts. I already did this as a UX blocks. And if you're not familiar with custom product layout, just search on Google custom product layout Flatsom. You can find a lot of video tutorials and we even have a documentation page about this uh, custom product layout. Uh, what, what you can do now is once you have created the custom product layout, we can go to products. And then, uh, for example, I want to assign that custom pr product layout to my headphone, just going inside the product, scroll down, and here you can find product layout. And by clicking on it, now you can see you can select the specific layout. So I created only one, the white gallery. I'm just going to update one update this product and as you can see it's going to open up and you can see it's now having a different layout it's the white gallery slider it's really cool and if i'm going back to my shop opening up the laptop you can still see it's having that old layout so now you can create a unique page structure layout design for each one of your products and there's a lot of shops out there that could really benefit from it um, the other thing that I would like to show you is that you can assign that custom pr product layout to a category, meaning that let's say I have multiple headphones and I want all my headphones to be sharing that same layout. You can just go to the specific category and then scroll down and here you can find the custom product layout as well. So now I can assign that white gallery and now I'm sure that all my products that will be in that category headphones will be using that uh, same uh, product layout. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to close this one down. I'm just going to check mark this and uh, going to the third one, the cookie banner GDPR. Uh, I used to work with a lot of plugins to, to create this, but now it's natively there inside Flatsome. So to do this, you go to Flatsome, theme options, and here you can find the new GDPR uh, section. It's very cool because it has that flat sum uh, feeling directly, so it could really integrate with your layout. I'm just going to enable the cookie notice to show you. So here I will put my text. And then you can see here on the bottom, you can see the text. And I think I'm in the middle of it. And here you can find the accept button. Uh, you could also select a page, for example, and then you will have a privacy link. Where is it? There you can see the privacy link. You will have a more info button and then you can link to a privacy page. You can also, you know, change the background color and you can set the text color to white and then you can make it look uh, integrated with your design. So that's very cool. And then the version thing. So once you once you updated the um, your privacy policy, for example, and you need the people to accept it again. So once you uh, accept it, you won't see the cookie banner anymore. But let's say you updated the privacy policy and you need for legal reasons to uh, let your visitors accept it again, you can set the version at two or three and then it will be showing, it will be showed again for all your visitors. So that's a good thing to know. So I think I've said everything about the GDPR. I'm just gonna publish and then going back to my list. So the fourth thing, and that's a really cool feature as well. We can now stack elements inside the UX builder powered by the Flexbox. So I'm just, I just also got familiar with this new feature. So I'm just gonna show you some basics of it. I'm just gonna open up the UX builder. 
Here we go. And I just have a section with a row, and inside that row, I have a column. Very easy. So let's say I want to stack two buttons beside each other. Usually, usually, I just put like rows and columns inside of each other, also for text. But now you can add the element stack. You can search on stack here on the left. It's just a new element that has been included in the UX Builder. And I'm just going to drag that here, or just going to double click. And as you can see, the stack element is inside the column. So let's say I'm just going to add two text elements. Nice thing is, I'm just going to, and that's also a nice feature. You can hold the command, uh, the option key, and then drag a little bit down, and then it will be duplicating that element. It's something different, but I just found out that's possible. So holding the option key, dragging down, and then you can just uh, duplicate all the stuff. And as you can see, it has been stacking all these text elements beside each other. So I'm just going to delete because this is a little bit of an overkill. But this is a very easy way to stack elements beside each other. And the nice thing is that you have a lot of options inside this stack element. So as you can see, the direction is horizontal, but let's say I want them vertically. And then, well, there's also alignment, distribute. You can even, you know, increase the gap. And again, I just found out, so I need to play a lot with this new uh, functionalities and there, there are various uh, combinations to be made, but I'm just gonna uh, close it. And what I also really like is that there's a responsive option for all these settings. So let's say I want them horizontally aligned next to each other on desktop, but on a tablet, for example, I want them vertically. So this it really, uh, ben well, me as a designer could really benefit from this. Uh, I can, you know, change everything. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can uh, also, I think you can even increase the gap between elements responsively. So play around with that. I'm very curious uh, uh, what, what you guys will be creating with the new stack element. I will definitely dig into this and create new stuff in the Flatsome Studio. Uh, but this is Stack, and uh, I'm again, I'm very excited about this new Flexbox option. Uh, I'm just going to close it down. I won't go through all the items, all the features, but I think I've said enough about Stack for now. Just going to check mark this one, and then I'm just going to tell, oh, yeah, the slide effect of Canvas mobile menu. So what's this? Um, so I already have the mobile menu here, as you can see. Uh, and I already integrated this. And this is the new slide functionality. So in the old days, it will just open up like an accordion. But now you can click on it and go a, a, a level deeper. And this gives you much more space vertically to uh, position more, much more items. So I really like that. Just going to show you where you can set this. So going to Flatsome, Theme Options, Header, and then Header Mobile. Just going to open it up. And here you can find the menu item behavior. I'm just going to show you show you that in a minute. But here you can find sub menu effect, accordion, and slide. So I'm just going to put it back to accordion so you can get an understanding what it used to be. So I'm going to open it up. And as you can see, this was the old way. So we just open up everything underneath each other. And now with the slide function, we can go deeper as you can see, and that's very cool. I'm just gonna show you also that I now have two levels here, two level deep sub menu. So once I've set it to one, just gonna close this and refresh it. As you can see now, I just have one, well, I'm just gonna show you because that makes much more sense. It's gonna show you my menu structure. So I have shop about service and studio and studio is one level deeper underneath services. And um, as you can see at the moment going to about, you can see that the um, studio is underneath services right away. So let's say I'm just gonna put this at level two. That will just give us another level to click on. So I'm just gonna refresh and then about, and as you can see, I can click another time on services and then you go a level deeper. So I hope, hopefully this makes sense, just going back. And then uh, also a nice thing is that you can set the menu item behavior to open link. And I think that's the second point. So I'm just gonna check mark this one. So the mobile menu, parent menu item behavior. And um, by doing this, you can say 
that it will open up the link or toggle the sub menu. So what does this mean? So now I can click on the about. Oh, sorry, I don't think that's an actual page. So I'm just gonna uh, create shop page. Oh, so let's say I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put services underneath the um, shop. So let's say I'm just gonna open up the mobile menu again and I can click on shop and then go to shop. But sometimes you want people to force them to go a level deeper. So what I can choose to not uh, open the link, but toggle the sub menu. So now I'm just gonna publish, just gonna refresh. And now it's not possible to click on this. Oh, it is. Let me see what I've not done. Yeah, as you can see, it's working now. So now because I have set the uh, menu item behavior to toggle sub menu, you can click on it and you cannot click on shop. You, you can click on it, but you go a level deeper. So that's a good thing to know. You force people to go a level deeper and you cannot click on the actual link. So that is done. Just gonna check mark this one. And then we now have a navigation color option for the header top bar. Just gonna show you that quickly. So this is the top bar. Here you can see it. And now by going to the top bar settings, you can now set a color. As you can see, it's now red. I put it at yellow. Uh, and then you also have some navigation styles to work with. So that's pretty cool. You could set the hover, hover as well and play around with this. <clears throat> Just gonna close it down and I'm gonna check mark this one as well. So now we have also the sticky sidebar option for the shop page and the blog page. So this is my shop page and I think I already check marked it in the Flatsome team options, but I will go to Flatsome team WooCommerce product category <clears throat> product catalog. Just gonna open up my shop as well. And here, when you scroll down, you can find the sticky sidebar option underneath the uh, cat catalog layout. So uh, you need, of course, have to have a sidebar to make this work. But now I'm just gonna check mark this, and then you can see it's sticky. I don't have a lot of products, so you don't see it's sticky. But let me show you what it does. I'm just gonna. Add some height. So let's say 1000 pixels. So when I'm scrolling down, as you can see, the left sidebar is sticky on the left. So that's how it works. And, and it's the same thing for a blog. So once you have chosen to work with a sidebar on your blog page, so going to blog, uh, I think it's blog layout. As you can see, you can have the sticky sidebar option for a blog as well but you need to have your right or left sidebar enabled. So just gonna close this down, check mark this one and this one, and then we can get to the next point and that's responsive margin and padding for columns. So that's also pretty cool because uh, we only used to have this function in the row settings. So now I'm just gonna open up the row and as you can see, uh, we would all already have the, the responsive column padding here but now you can set them individually for each column. So let's say we have a six column here and we have one for this one. And now you can go inside the column and then you can set the paddings and the margins responsively and you can play around with that. Um, I'm, not going, I'm not going to tell you any more about this, but you can just increase the padding and the margin for desktop, tablet and mobile. All right, check. So now we have breadcrumbs integration and the primary category integration for rank math. That's a SEO plugin. Uh, I won't go into that because that's very specific for the people that will be using that plugin, but uh, probably for you guys that are out there using it, uh, you're probably happy with it because now you can integrate this inside Flatsome. So I'm just gonna check mark this one and this one as well. So now there's also an option to archive the sorting or sorting the archive for portfolio. And you also have some more archive styling options. Just going to Flatsome, show you this very quickly uh, because I don't have a portfolio set up on my uh, test environment. But going to portfolio, as you can see, you can now uh, set the order by and also here. And there's also a bunch of new features. So you can increase the image radius, image size, image depth, hover, even the spacing. You can even set the items per row for desktop, tablet, mobile. So you can really style it down 
and customize your portfolio with this. So that's pretty cool. Check, check. Uh, so now you can also order uh, your block elements. So I'm just gonna show you inside the UX builder, there's a way of course to add block, uh, the block element. Here it is. And going inside the settings, scrolling down, you now have the new functionality to uh, order by and order uh, your blog posts. So just gives you a little bit more flexibility. Just gonna check this one as well. Then we now have a close element, uh, <clears throat> a way to close uh, the UX builder uh, by pr pressing the escape key. Very easy. So let's say I'm inside text. I can just click on my keyboard on the escape. Uh, I need to be in this text editor and then it's gone. It's very easy. And I think it works the same with adding an element <clears throat> by clicking on the plus. And as you can see, I just can click on escape and then it's gone. So just a way to even work faster with the UX builder. <clears throat> Check. Okay, so now we have a new single product related upsell responsive product row option. So Probably you're familiar with it, but you can set product related and upsells on your product page. And now you have just have a little bit more uh, options uh, regarding to that. So on the product page, when you scroll down, where is it uh, related? Here you can find the related and the upsell. And here you can find the new functions that you can set the product rows now on tablet and on mobile and, uh, and just choose what kind of columns you want to show. I'm just gonna check this as one as well. And then there's a new catalog filter. So that's also pretty cool. We used to have a filter option that would just having that same symbol as the mobile menu was a little bit confusing. So I'm just gonna show you. So it's this little new symbol. So instead of that symbol, we now have the filter uh, symbol that just gives that little bit more filter feeling. So that's the icon we added, done. Uh, we updated the Google fonts. I'm not familiar with all the new fonts that has been included in this update, but I can tell you one of my favorite fonts is there. It's Inter. It's just a personal favorite. Just have a look at it, uh, Inter font. I, mean, I really like it. This is the one. It's a very nice sans serif font that I think you could also use for uh, your shop. I'm uh, just going to style typography. And here you can find uh, the Google fonts. And Inter is there, as you can see. So there's a bunch of new fonts, but it has been updated. So um, I think I've said enough. Check. And then there's just a new translation added to Spanish Argentina. Tinia. Anyway. Um, hopefully it's useful for the people out there. So I'm gonna check it and we're done. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm very excited about this team update. Hopefully this gives you a clear understanding of all the new stuff. I'm just gonna close it and I see you in the next video. Good luck uh, creating more awesome websites or running your web shop. See you, bye-bye.